Here we go. The red is yep. yours. Okay. Um, who who knows these stuff? Let's find out where everybody is first. I know some of you do. Okay. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna do a little bit with D Star tonight. Um, Ron and I are gonna trade back and forth. We're gonna do this as kind of quickly go over some some bullets, some high points about D Star, and then as quickly as we can and get some questions answered. Uh, we're gonna talk more in detail about how to set up a radio and how to do the things that you can do with D-Star. And then the hope is that we're going to do a demonstration of, of, uh, of linking uh, D-Star radios to, to reflectors. And we're going to show you how it works. Uh, we did this once before and it's, it's one thing to see it on the screen and try to talk through what everything is, is how it's all working. But this time we're going to try to actually show you. So we're going to, we'll do some stuff. So um, just a very basic high level agenda. We're going to talk about what it is, uh, what D-Star is, what, uh, how it's used for emergency communications. And that's where Ron's going to talk some about the hospital net. And then we'll jump into uh, c configuring uh, the data fields and, and then we'll do a demonstration. So a few people need D-Star. Who knows Doctor Who? You got to know Doctor Who. I knew you would. Nobody else knows Doctor Who. Okay, another Doctor Who. Okay, cool. So, the if you've seen this quote from Doctor Who, I had to get points from my daughters for, by putting a Doctor Who reference in here. Um, this agenda is kind of a big ball of wibbly wobbly, timey wimey stuff. Y'all direct this, okay? If you have questions, stop what we're saying and ask the questions. And and I want to be sure we we helped you get. So it's it's too early to. Stop now, John. <laughs> Go ahead. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> Mr. Riddle. <laughs> Would it help right, if we turn some of the lights off? Up to you. Uh, you want to do that? I'll cut already to go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Well, so so D Star is actually, and and this presentation, this is the first time we've been through these slides. Okay, I've seen them, I put them together, but they're kind of they're kind of still warm, and Ryan has seen his. So so, uh, and I'll, I'll apologize for that if we get kind of uh, uh, out of order here, but but uh, help us keep it straight. Ask questions as you have them. So D Star is digital smart technologies for amateur radio. I've been using it for several years and I didn't know that. I had to look it up. It's actually been around since the 1990s. I didn't know that, that it's, it's, it's been around for a while. Uh, I didn't have a ham radio license in 1990. Uh, and, I, and I thought it was new. Um, created by the Japan Amateur Radio League and ICOM. Uh, and, you know, just it, it's just on the surface, it's just repeaters that are that do digital voice. Uh, is all it is. There's a lot of internet connectivity behind that that can be part of it, but the but a standalone repeater uh, is just a uh, regular amateur radio repeater. Uh, does digital voice? I'm going to go really fast through this part. It's it's a narrow it's a more narrow bandwidth than a regular than an analog repeater, so you can get more repeaters in an area. Um, error correction. It's kind of interesting with the 440, with our 440 D Star repeater on the air now. Um, I'm hearing Lee and Ron perfectly on that repeater, and it's not moving the needle at all. I have zero signal strength on the radio. But if you if you've heard D Star, you know what R2D2 is. Um, R2D2 is when you're going just a little too far with D Star, and the signal strength is too low, and it can't get it through, and the voice is garbled. Uh, you got to have no signal to get to that. If you get if you get anything at all, uh, it'll try to put the voice together. And I'm amazed that that 440 repeater is doing as well as it is with no amplifier. The output of the 440 is the max that ICOM has set up. It's 20 watts. Yeah, and it's how far from here, roughly? 
10, 15? About 15. 15 miles west of here. And so, basically, I, phenomenal. what I got used in those was two mobile units. Yeah. So the one is, is receiving only, and the other one is transferring. Right. And the antenna is on top of the 100-foot tower, which puts it about 331 feet above average terrain. So it's like it's going a good in the middle spot. of the field and putting up a 331-foot tower. I mean, you're that far above average terrain. Right. So that helps but, tremendously, of course. Yeah. Okay. Um, some terminology a little bit. When it started, it, so you take that repeater and you connect it to the Internet. And I'll show you a picture of what that looks like in, in just a little bit. But you're, you're taking the repeater, you're connecting it to the internet so you can get to other repeaters, uh, other D-Star repeaters. The early usage of it w as it was developed, um, if Ryan is in um, Delaware on a repeater and I'm in Dallas and I want to talk to Ryan, I put Ryan's call sign in a field on my radio and I key up and it finds him on whatever repeater he last keyed on. He puts my call sign in and then we're talking back and forth. So that's the way it was done originally. Um, <clears throat> there are problems with that. It's, you, um, I guess I won't go into that a lot, but you're, you're not, if I call Ron and that, uh, my voice gets routed to his repeater in Delaware, there may be a net going on I'm not going to hear it. I'm going to jump into the middle of it and not even know that I'm doing that. So, problem with call, with what's called call sign routing. So, the next implementation in it was was this concept of reflectors. So, I'll show you a picture of it in in a few minutes. But you think of of the repeater sitting up at Fire Station Seven, uh, connected to the internet, and in some data center somewhere there is a computer running software that is a reflector. So, and those of you who know D-Star, you know what Reflector 30 is, right? Um, uh, I just have a, how does it know that Ron is in Maryland? Or wherever, how does it know that? That's part of the... Um, does he have to have his radio on or something? With, 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 the, with the... the version of this that everybody has been using, the, the earlier version of D-Star, you have to register your call sign uh, before you can, uh, not before you can transmit on the repeater, but for, before you can do anything across the internet. So you put your call sign in a database and from that point on it keeps up with where you are. And if Ron's in Delaware and he keys mm -hmm. his mic, and, that, and, and registering is accomplished how? Um, through um, the website. The, right, through a website. Through a website, now you register. Yeah. It takes 24 to 40 hours for your call sign to migrate to every D Star server in the world. So we've got, so, it, so our D Star gateway up at Station 7 has every registered call sign anywhere in the U.S. in it. And if, if Ron keys up his mic, uh, somewhere in that network it keeps up with which repeater he's on so it can route calls through like that. The key thing is that it's only remembering your last time you transmitted. Right. That's right. If Ron goes somewhere else away from that repeater and he doesn't key his radio up it still thinks he's back at the set of Right. Oh, so even though you're registered you have to key it in order to sort of to update your location. But the, but the newer the newer implementation though using reflectors people have kind of gotten away from that kind of call sign routing where you actually put the the name the call sign in and it finds you with with a reflector the reflector is a computer sitting in a data center somewhere we can link our repeater to a reflector so we link our d star repeater to reflector 30b 30 Bravo. Nice. All of the repeaters in the state of Georgia link to 30B. Then if somebody transmits on a linked repeater, it goes to 30 Bravo, it gets blasted out to all of those repeaters. Gotcha. So different way of thinking through it, that's the way most of the repeaters do that. And what, yes sir? You still 
still have to register your call sign to get it in the system. Yes. yes. Yeah, you do. You that's, do register. That's separate from the and, other stuff you're talking about. Right. You, you do have to, and there there are two versions of of this whole thing. There is the way it was done that everybody did that everybody used that it used the what's called the U.S. Trust system, where you, that's where you register your call sign. There's another group of hams who decided we don't really care if you register your call sign. We want to use open source technology. And, and build our own implementation of this. Um, and you don't have to register on that one. And both of those are available to us. There's, I, I can't get into that here tonight because I'm learning it, actually. It's, there's a lot going on over there in that space um, that I, I still don't completely understand. But Now, if our uh, repeater is hooked up to Reflector 30 Bravo, Say I'm in Chicago, Illinois, trying to find this character. Mm -hmm. Would they be? They wouldn't be on the same reflector, would they? They probably will not be. Third, the reflector, reflector thirty is a Georgia reflector. So um, there's a lot of traffic on one of its modules, but but no, Chicago probably wouldn't be. So what you do, and what I'm going to show you in a little while. Is how when you once you find a repeater in Chicago, uh, you can unlink it from whatever it's linked to, and then you can link it to 30 Bravo. Oh, you have that control? Yes, you do. Yes. Yes. And and when I started doing this, I was always kind of afraid. You know, these guys have their repeater linked the way they want it. Do I really want to mess with that? You're supposed to be free to do that. Everybody wants you to. to uh, don't do it in the middle of a net. But um, but learn how to control these things. Jump in there and link it somewhere. If you want to do something on on our repeater uh, at Station Seven, uh, if you want to go talk to somebody, uh, we were listening to who was that? It was Queensland. Is that British Columbia? No, is that was, was that Australia? Australia. Australia? It was Australia. Australia. We were listening to Australia in your earlier. I was linked to. To one to reflector one Charlie, and we were listening to Australia. So, purpose of this thing is to use it. So, learn how to control the repeaters, unlink it, link it where you want it. On our repeater, if you do that and you don't link it back the way we had it, it'll fix itself after a little while of no activity. It'll oh, link back the way we had it. Yeah, yeah. So, so learn to do it, play with it. So. If you link or unlink the repeater, before you do that, listen to be sure nobody's on there. Yep. And very politely say, does anyone have an objection? Yep. I unlink the machine yeah. and link it to 30 Charlie or Reflector 001. And then wait about 15 or 20 seconds. If nobody says anything, go ahead and do it. Yep. And then when you're done, link it back to where it was. Yeah, that's just courtesy. That's, that's just courtesy. courtesy. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. So it's kind of high level, some bullets, and you ask some questions. Any other questions right now before Ron takes over? For yeah, well, I didn't mean to get all that. No, that's good. That's good. We're going to get into, what, into how you do that in just a few minutes. Ron, um, you want to talk a little about the, the, uh, the emergency communications part of it? Okay, fine. Let's try and do this. First off, we've got the state of Georgia and several other states starting in North Carolina, running down south of Florida, around all the way out to California. Uh, several years ago, we're all given grant money by the federal government. We're talking about $275,000. What started all this was when uh, Hurricane Katrina came through. All communications in all other states were completely lost. They had no cell phone. Uh, no landline, no, and nothing, absolutely nothing. And when things started to come back up online, they found out that some of the states did have D-Star equipment where very quickly it would communicate over vast distances very, very rapidly and clear as a bell. The HF bands, the high-frequency bands on amateur radio, were still inoperative. They were not functioning very well at all. And to relay on VHF every 15 or 20 miles just took forever. So D-Star became very popular very quickly. 
Now, in the state of Georgia, most of the repeaters that we have in the state are funded or were funded by GEMA through that grant. The initial program was set up to put a repeater on every PBS tower in the state. That would have given us HT coverage statewide with 5 watts. Now, the drawback to why that didn't happen is a lot of things happened. One of them was it was very expensive for the PBS station to run all that coax for a key up a 100 foot tower. And also pay commercial prices for internet. So that's what they didn't want to do it. So repeaters were dispersed to the highest points around that they could possibly be done at the lowest possible cost. Most of the machines are northeast of here. There's 19 of them. We, have, we, we requested one, but we just couldn't get one. So we bought our own. Okay. Now another part about this is there are several nets on. One is a hospital net. The hospital net started up primarily about a year or so ago. At the end or middle of November of last year, a CMS rule put up by the federal government started to take full effect. CMS stands for Certified Medicare Medicaid Services. The hospitals were all given radios several years ago. Most of them were Kenwood, VHF, UHF, D710, and D700 radios. The regional hospitals, which are the supply hospitals, as an example, Paulding County, our regional supply hospital is Kennestone. Kennestone has responsibility for Paulding County and for Douglas County Hospital. The first Sunday of every month, there's a hospital net. At 2 o'clock, the sub-hospitals, Paulding and Douglas County, are supposed to contact Kennestone Hospital on their VHF radio. This will happen sometime between 2 and 3 o'clock, the first Sunday of every month. This is to verify the equipment operates. We also leave a report of the number of operators that were each hospital and their call sign, and the equipment was tested, and the contact was established with the Kennestone Hospital. At 3 o'clock, the statewide net goes into effect on the HF bands. The last couple of years, they've had a great deal of trouble making HF contacts with all the regional hospitals throughout the entire state. So they have resorted to D-STAR. D-STAR is their primary backup. They coordinate all the frequencies on D-STAR. Ron, excuse me. You, you mentioned something that caught my attention about emergency services mm -hmm. for D-STAR. And that was the internet. And you mentioned that during Katrina, the internet went down. Right. But how isn't that going to also affect uh, the D Star mode of tempo? Well, when the internet's down, down, the internet's down, you have basically if you've got D Star repeater, it's still up. It's just like an analog repeater. You got 20, 30, 40 mile range. Okay, I just want to be clear. I got a story about that in just yeah, a minute. Yeah, but the phone company's major priority, whenever there's a major disaster, the phone company's major and first priority is to get landline and internet service back up. That is their number one priority. I see. Okay. So, also the primary thing here with the hospital net is they have decided that these are going to be the primary backup. They do other formation through that. They're now in the process of trying to get all the hospitals in the state to purchase D-Star radios. So we need some more D-Star operators. It's really very important. They're trying to get the radio that uh, Dan's got over there, the ICOM 5100. That runs right around, close to $600. Yes, Is ICOM the only way to get into D-Star? Uh, at the moment, it is the primary search, yes. There is, there is, right, right now there's one other D-Star radio in the market, there is a Kenwood. I saw a picture, I haven't told you this, I saw a picture of a Bofang the other day that said D-Star. The price tag was around $140. Okay, but let me make one comment. <laughs> okay, one, one comment on the Bofang radio real quick. They're cheap, Yep. they do work, but they're very dirty. Yep. The way the FCC rule reads on a radio, they say, well, it's going to be FCC type accepted. Well, I thought for a long time the type accepted meant the manufacturer submitted their specifications. The FCC read them. They got a couple of radios. They tested them and said, yes, you passed. You can market your equipment in the United States. That's not true. They can market anything. It's up to the amateur radio operator to determine if it's clean radio or not. 
if it's dirty and you've got one, you can lose your license. What I hope is that, that we're seeing the beginning of other manufacturers uh, yeah. building well, radios. Yeah. Yeah. Ron, some folks might not understand the term dirty. What that means is the transmitter is transmitting a lot of noise and stuff outside the bands of where the FCC says it's allowed to. Yeah, they call it spray, spray radiation, right. harmonics and things. Like stuff. Now, this is not a low fight. When it transmits, it transmits between the frequencies it's supposed to. I've got two bullfang radios. I don't take them out of my house because when they transmit on the same frequency, it's probably about that wide. Well, you get harmonics too. Yeah, so yeah. Forth, yeah they're they're trying to be way out from where they should be. Right. And so they can be they can be interfering with military and this type of stuff. Did, that that have, did they ever release it? No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There, there's another. Chuck brought up. There's okay, another. So bottom line is it, it, it's ICOM and perhaps Ken Kenwood for now. Connect. Connect Systems has said they were going to have a, a DSR radio, but that's been about it's been two or three years ago. Yeah, and and they haven't done it yet. I hope that we're getting close though to some other other manufacturers jumping but, in. Uh, I, I just want clarity on say, I mean, if we have a natural disaster and the internet is down, we're still re going to rely on analog VHF and perhaps HF. Right, you have no choice. Yes. Okay. Just, okay. okay. I'm going to tell you a story in a minute. Okay. Now let, let's get back on that emergency thing really, really quick. So yeah. On some of the actual facts here. Okay. So the state of Georgia has centralized on these star. A lot of other states have done it as well. So we need, we need more people to get interested in these and buy the equipment. Dan and I would be more than happy if you buy radio, HD, whatever. I have a lot of pieces of the RT system software. There's almost nothing that I can't program on the computer. And the same thing with Dan. We'll be glad to set them up for you, get them going, get you on the air. And then help you learn how to operate and why you have to do certain things. Okay? So for your next radio, if you're thinking about it, I'm going to check out this little guy here. This is a brand new thing on the market. It's a 4100A. It's the cheapest base mobile on the market right now. It's 390 bucks. Okay? It comes programmed with every D star repeater in the world. Okay? And so, so does the Android. Okay? That's how they spend how they sell. However, they have a deluxe version, which I found out today. The deluxe version comes with this little racket. <laughs> 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 the guy asked me, he said, you want the price for the deluxe model or the regular model? And I said, well, what's the difference? He says, well, if you get the deluxe model, so you this, the car one, this one doesn't even have this. It doesn't have a bracket at all. Yeah. 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 The deluxe yeah. yeah. one does. Yeah. 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 So what we need, and remember, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, another one. I bought the deluxe one because it doesn't come with the bracket. We're talking about the deluxe like this. How much more was it? On Hurricane Irma came out. That wasn't that much back in uh, October, whatever it was, okay? The entire state, I, I got on 955, I got on DRATS and all this other kind of stuff to try to find out what was going on, what was happening in the state. And I just decided, well, I'm just going to turn on the D-Star and see what happens. I got on a D-Star radio, the first second or 30 maker, everybody was there. The entire state of Georgia, all of Aries, has decided that D Star, Reflector and 30 Baker, is the way to go. And that's what they're doing. I have a little box at home, a little bit bigger than this one. It's called an open spot. It runs 724. <laughs> and what it does, I have a link in the Reflector 30 Baker. It pings Reflector 30 Baker two times a second. And the minute it doesn't get a response back, it transmits to my radio in voice. It says, Open spot disconnected on reflector 030B. Reflector 30 Baker has recently been moved to Amazon.com for reliability. But before then, when it was in another data center, that reflector went down in the middle of a hurricane and nobody knew it except me. I went downstairs and got on my HF radio and started talking on 3975 to net control. And, they, and this guy in the background says, well, how does Ron West know that reflector's down? <laughs> I'm telling you it's up. He knows that. And I could hear him in the background say that. And I said, well, you tell him it's down. Because I know it's down. And they did. And the guy went, he says, son of a gun, it is down. 
<laughs> so they brought it back up. It was up for five minutes. It went down again. I called him right back. And he says, that cannot be down again. I just reset it. And they went back and checked it. And it's because that little open spot pings that reflector every twice a second, every time. And if it doesn't get a response, it tells me right away. Wow. That's, that's so, so they sent it. They went over to another reflector uh, in, in another location. And they told the guy, sit there and watch it. <laughs> Make sure it doesn't go down. <laughs> so, but anyway, just to make a long story short, so it's very important. They, they, everything is on these terms. So, if you want to participate in state events, see what's going on, be able to relay stuff to the various nets that are going on, you really need to think about seriously getting involved with these stars. It really is very important, especially the hospital nets. Okay, now there are several ways to do it. Okay, all right. Go ahead. Tell, tell me your part. Show and tell. Show and tell. Steve introduced me to this, and I think he was the first one to get one. It's a uh, Northwest Digital Thumb Drive. Plug this into your computer, you use your computer, you're right on these stars. What's, what's the cost? Uh, 100 bucks. About 119. However, you're $20. Here's one bell. One caveat do not drop it. <laughs> My second one. Hey Chuck, throw it here. I'll it. Okay, now the only problem, the only negative to that is that's a dongle, and you have to stay at your computer. You're off your computer. Well, okay. you can take it one step further now. So you, you, you want a headset? They now have uh, the program available for both Android and hmm. iPhone, and with a little adapter like this. Oh, so you're plugging in your phone. Plug right in your phone. You got instant these stuff. There you go. Good deal. That, that's a good idea. Okay. Well, what's the uh, program's Blue DV for your phone? Okay. Now, one other, now one other thing. Now, since, since you're talking about flexibility, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say about the uh, Northwest Digital Dongle. Uh, what I've done with mine is to keep it safe so you don't drop it like Steve did. Uh, <laughs> Get, next time you run out of your pills from CVS or Walgreens or wherever, the little bottle, tear the label off of it, and those things fit perfectly down there. Put the lid on it, and you can carry it that way, and it'll never get broken. I'll never also, wrap it. Well, yeah, but if you do put it in a little bottle, you've got, you know, never one. But it works great. I, I, Dan's heard me on this thing. Yeah. Uh, everybody's ever heard me on this thing said the audio is just absolutely very, very, very good. Very clear. And there, there are other devices called a DVAP, which is a digital voice access point. That's a little unit, something similar to what he has there. Uh, and it's got a little tiny transmitter antenna on it. It's something similar to this, but not this. Okay? And if you plug it into the USB port on your laptop, program it for your simplex frequency on your V-Star radio, and you can get up to about seven, eight, maybe a thousand feet away from that little unit and use your hand talking. And you're still you're still working just fine, okay? So there there are things that we'll tell Dan. I will tell you about these things. We'll do it now. We'll do it later. Um. Let, well, we're going to demonstrate. I'm going to okay. demo this. Right. This is this is my version of it that's running on a Raspberry Pi. Did they, but he made his, three different kinds this, of. This this is the newest commercial version of it. Yeah. A little bit. Smaller. I'll show you the interface on that one. We're actually going to use this one, and I'll show you on screen. Okay. And this has built-in Wi-Fi, which. You, you can put this sucker on your pants, put a battery on it, take this, you can talk any place in the world, up to 14 hours. Yeah. Until your battery goes dead. Okay. All right. So. All right, so there we go. So please, uh, we need more help. Uh, Mike over here at Blackwell, a 4 us he's helping me out in Douglasville, the hospital there. The reason this is so very important, this hospital net, to have an operator there, have that equipment tested, is if it's not tested so many times a year, that hospital risks the opportunity of losing some of their Medicare, Medicaid funding. And they they do not want to have that happen. And we don't want to have that on our shoulders either. There are 140 hospitals in this state. <coughs> 45 of them right now have radios. Wells are just purchased about 30 or 40 more hospitals to bring that number up to 145. And they're, they've got a bunch of radios on the order to get them installed. They're requesting Aries, meaning all of us are people in Aries. They're requesting six operators for a hospital. They want us to be, be able to supply a 72-hour run for in 12-hour shifts for three days. And there's just not enough operators in the state to do that. 
I'd like to get at least two for each hospital. I'll be thrilled to death with that. Yes, sir. What is being done to, to get us into the building? First off, we have to get the volunteers to do it. We've got to get people trained on these star That's the second option. Because when you and I went in there, I couldn't get in there without you. That's right. Okay. We, we, I'll have to speak with their EM director. Okay. Every hospital, unfortunately, and the people at the state level and areas are constantly fighting this battle. Every hospital wants to have a different type of clearance for everybody. And that's ridiculous. What they're trying to do at the state level in areas is to get a state areas badge, which means you'll have a security clearance, so you'll have to have either a, a gun carry permit or go through some kind of background check, and that costs $35. Then you also have to, you have to establish proficiency in FL Digi and an RMS Express in Midland. And they make that determination if you're going to do it. So it, it, this is not just so, something you say, yeah, I'm going to do that, I'll walk in and do it. <clears throat> you've got, there are certain steps you've got to pass in order to get a state areas badge. If you don't want to get a state areas badge, you don't want to go through all that stuff, you can still do it. You're just classified as a, a number one operator instead of a number two or number three. And that's no big deal, okay? Because we can do that locally. I can work with the local EM director of Paulding Hospital and also through my with the gentleman over at Douglas Hospital. They only want no more than three people in Douglas Hospital. We're trying to get around that. We're trying to say to them, can you run your hospital for 72 hours with just a minimal amount of staff? That's impossible, you can't do it. You get tired, you make mistakes. But I, I'm really grateful for Mike has stepped in to do Douglas Hospital. Right now, he's the only one over there doing it. We need some more folks over in that, over in that area to actually step up and do it. And remember, the state, hurricanes, tornadoes, snowstorms, any of that sort of thing. We need more people because I live in an area. I have to come down to Big Hill, make a turn, and walk up Big Hill to get to my house. If we have a major disaster, I can't get out. So we need other people. Running. But I can read that information. And Dan was in the same boat that last... Yeah, I was trapped by a tree. That last little snowflake coming yeah. out. So we need yeah. a lot of people getting involved here as soon as they possibly can. Right. And so, you know, these are fantastic. Neil. Yeah, Neil, I'm sorry, go ahead. I like to do the, the HIPAA training. That's, still, that's all, oh, they don't do that once a year. And you'd be surprised, they're willing to, they're willing to in order to keep the CMS rule active and keep themselves qualified, they're kind of letting that slip. Rick and I did the did the, the Paulding Hospital last Sunday, yeah. and we Ron we did it a little bit differently. We walked in the front door of the the ER, walked up to the desk, told them who we were, told them why we were there. I asked them to call security to yeah. let us into the office. So we just went back out and waited for security. They because you had let them know when we were coming in. They they came and let us in, did the test. We were gone and. Probably 30 it minutes. Us, well, it took us about 30 minutes because uh, Kenneth Stone wasn't uh, there wasn't at 2 o'clock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that happened but a it's, lot. So let's jump back to, let's get back to D-Star. Yeah, okay. so there we go. Um, That's pretty complete. The, Think about it. Yep. Yeah. So, and Ryan told a little of my story that I was going to tell. <laughs> that I'm, I'm going to go through a little bit of this anyway. Let's do it. I want to do a quick show of hands. Who thinks we can trust the internet during a, during a disaster? <laughs> Okay, so Ron told you a little about the story, but but Hurricane Irma uh, kind of raped the Georgia coast and went up into South Carolina, uh, did a good bit of damage. The, organ the state agency that I worked for paid a lot of insurance claims for state property that was damaged up through there. So uh, a good bit of wind, a lot of lot of damage along the Georgia coast, and the decision was made to use D Star for that. And they were using, they had D-Star in the hospitals and the local emergency operations centers linked back to uh, the state EFC in Atlanta, all going through Reflector 30B. And Ron noticed it was down, went back and forth with that, and then finally they switched over to a different reflector that was, was part of the plan. If 30 Bravo goes down, you switch to 4 Alpha. And that's part of the emergency plan. So, so they, everybody knew when when there was a problem with that reflector, just switch over and, and you can keep the net going. Um, 
So 30 went down, they switched over. Then the internet went down in some of the places like we know it will. In Savannah, at the, uh, the, the closest repeater to the hospital in Savannah, lost internet access. So they're off the, off the net. Well, but they realized that they could get to a repeater further inland where they still had internet access. So in a matter of a few minutes, the Savannah Hospital was back on that network and they were talking to the state EFC. Well, how, so, how, how would they do that? <coughs> they had, yeah, they're just changing to it, just like you would change from uh, 146.955 to Jasper. Oh, they just switched oh, to a different oh, repeater that was further inland did, did, where there wasn't any damage. damage. Right. Okay. So in that case, yeah, there were problems with the internet, but they were able to conduct an internet-based net. There was also, I think it was during that storm, Ron, where they were trying to bring up more of an HF net. Uh, I, they were trying to, to get in touch with Charles Pennington, and they couldn't get him because his antenna was down. So in the affected area, because of all the wind, they were having trouble with, with HF. So, I mean, my point is uh, it, it, they're all tools. V-Star, is a, HF is a great tool. Uh, those VHF and, and UHF repeaters are a great tool. The internet is a great tool as well. And, and it's available to us to use when it's there. And we know the, the thing that we bring to the table is we have a way to work around it if it goes away. So that's, that's uh, the point about that. Um, this is, I stole a lot of this. Uh, so I'm sorry for the, the kind of a strange graphic that's up here, but that's basically what this thing looks like. Um, it's also very fuzzy. It's, it's fuzzy when you're there at the fire station too because of the fire. But this is what we have up at fire station seven. There is a, 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 a band module. We have two of these. We've got a UHF module and a, and a VHF module. They are connected to an ICOM controller and they are connected to a desktop computer. Um, that desktop computer is running Linux, and it's running uh, some ICOM software and some third-party software that link that whole stack to the internet. And then, like I said, somewhere in a data center, and the Reflector 30 is now on, in Amazon's cloud. So somewhere out there in the internet are other computers that run reflectors. So the idea is, we, this, this one is showing reflector one. We could link our repeater system to that reflector, then these people could link to that reflector, and, and anything that goes out on either of them is heard on both. So it makes sense? The concept of, of the, the band module and the gateway are important in what, we're, what I'm gonna show you about the fields, and this is, Y'all tell me if, we, if, if, you, if I'm boring you, if you don't want to go here, but this is going to get into the details of how to set the radio up to do this stuff. So remember, the, in our case, the VHF module, the VHF repeater module is band C. And you'll know why I'm saying that in a minute. The UHF is band B. The gateway is band G. So kind of kind of keep that in mind. And that's a standard for all of them. Right. So I'm, I don't know why I threw this in here at this point, but that's our that's our repeater system, the D Star repeater system in Paulding County. And this is on the Silver Comet right. website under repeaters, right? So you can get that detail from there. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to do a little demo of this, and we're going to use my repeater and it's one of those things that Ron was showing uh, it's, it's this I'm going to use this as a demo and we're going to treat it like it's a repeater the dance okay version, this is a commercial version. and I think this one is a raspberry pi with a board in it right. his is a raspberry pi too you just don't see it um, I can show you the software I'm going to show you the software that it's running just a minute. but so here's how it all works. This is a um, screenshot from uh, RT System software. RT System software or Chirp, 
make this make setting this stuff up a lot easier. There are four data fields that you have to set. I mean, this is just like you would set up any analog frequency, any analog channel in a, in a radio, right? Except there are, I've got three data fields up here. There's actually a fourth one that I'm not showing here, but you have to set these up to make this thing work, okay? Um, the, the fourth field is my call sign. The field name is my call. And you set that one time on the radio and forget it. My call is your call sign if you're using that radio. Okay? The other three fields that, that are the ones that are, are changed to do different things are really these two. There's repeater one and repeater two. And remember I, what, what did I say the module was for our VHF repeater? Anybody remember that? Yes, C. C. It's C. Our VHF repeater is module C. UHF is module B. So if I had these channels set up for the WX4 PCA V Star repeater, I would have WX4, uh, WX4 PCA and then B in the eighth position if I'm using the UHF module. Yeah, that okay. column is eight characters wide. This, this is in the eighth position, same over here. So then what was the G module? You remember what it was? Gateway. It's the gateway, right. So repeater two is, is what your next step is. This one is what you're talking to. It's what you're, what you're talking to right now. And this is where you want to go next. If you're talking to a, a, one of these regular D-Star repeaters, you're always going to be putting it on the correct module for the, for the uh, repeater that you're using, and then you're going to set that to, to G, and you're going to leave it alone. Okay? I've got this one set up for my little uh, fake repeater there. That repeater is W4DTO. That's my call sign. And it, it's running on the B module, and my gateway, which is in that box, is the G module. So I've got all of these channels set up to, uh, to control uh, that hotspot, uh, and, and they're all with the same repeater, one and repeater two. Your <laughs> call sign, which is the, I think the way it's described in the documentation is UR call is the field name. Your call is where, in the old way of doing this, I would have put Ryan's call sign if I wanted to contact him on some remote system. We're not doing that anymore. We're using this as kind of a control channel to tell the repeater what we want to do. So I've got several different commands in my your call field that, and, and we'll demonstrate this in a minute. It's the spacing's weird on here, but uh, all of these are in the eighth position. Again, the, the command, the command, to do what you want to do is in the eighth, eighth uh, position. So if I transmit with the letter I in the your call field, it's it's doing info. So the repeater comes back to me and tells me uh, if it's linked, tells me what it's doing. If I transmit with an E in that field, it puts it in echo mode. So I key up and I transmit and I talk to it. It records what I'm saying and plays it back. That's kind of a test. And then I jump down to these next. This is a command, the, the L in the eighth position is the link command. So that command is gonna tell me, is gonna tell it to link that repeater to reflector 30 alpha. <coughs> Does that make sense? Stop me if this is, if, if I'm going off on the deep end here, if, if, if I can make it make better sense, help me. Um, so I've got four link commands, I've got 30 alpha, 30 bravo, 30 charlie. Those are all running on the same machine, it's just different, uh, different partitions on that 30 reflector. But then this one is, is a link for one Charlie, which is a, I think they call it the mega reflector, uh, 
jump on that one and you hear people all over the world. That's where we were here in Australia earlier tonight. Um, if, you're, if you're linked to one of those, if you're linked to 30 Bravo and you wanted to link it to 30 Charlie, you send the U command in the UR field. That's unlinked. And it'll come back and tell you that it's not linked. And then you can just turn to one of these channels and key up and it'll, it'll link. Okay, Dan, just, just one second. On, and you can, anybody can do this now, they can do it on DSTAR or not. There's an info page on DSTAR that tells you yep. exactly what the reflectors are used for. In other words, there are certain ones out in Nevada, and there's a couple over in a foreign country that will say, if you don't speak Japanese or Italian, don't even think about getting on <laughs> Or you can. You can, pretend, you can and you can pretend you understand what they say, and people will be really impressed. <laughs> But there, there are hundreds of, of these. Um, I, I don't know what the number goes through, but there's a, an A, B, A, B, C, and sometimes D on all of them. There, there are hundreds of these. And then you get into those others. Remember where I said they were using open source software to create a different kind of reflector? There's thousands of these things out there that you can link to. Um, and I've got, I've, I didn't print it out, but I've got uh, the website Ron was talking about on a later slide so I can we can show you where to go to see that. So does that kind of make sense? Just different channels in the radio and you're just spinning the knob and putting it on a different channel. You're staying on the same frequency so it's staying on the same repeater. Um, in my label I'm kind of telling this is my zone spot. I labeled that one wrong. But I'm kind of putting in my, my label what the commands are and this is the command that I'm sending to the repeater. Does that kind of make sense? You want to see it work? Okay. Every, right. And then I didn't talk. I didn't tell you about this one. CQ, CQ, CQ. That means I'm not sending a command. I'm trying to talk to the thing. It, when you want to talk, if you if if you've just linked up to 30 uh, alpha, let's say, and um, then you key up and start talking, it's going to send the link command again. We don't want it to do that. So after you've linked it, you switch back to CQ, 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 and that tells the system that you're just in transmit mode, that, that you want what you transmit is going to hit that repeater, and then you want it to go there, and then it's going to go out to wherever you've got it linked. So, Dan, just a quick question. Each, each uh, roll there, it's all the same frequency. So when you're changing... I guess you call it the channel. The yeah. channel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're actually going to different, a different command mode. Right. That's right. You're yeah. just yeah. changing yeah. this yeah. setting. Yeah. That's the only thing you're changing is that setting. So when you change, do you, do you key down to send that yes. command? Yes, yes. You, 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 if I wanted the link to 30 alpha, yeah, just put it there, key it, and let go. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, each one of those is a different profile, basically. Right. Okay. So, let's see if we can make it work. You can also get on <laughs> this is going to be scary. And you can see a list of everybody that transmit in the last half hour. Maybe your call sign, the reflector they're on, the frequency they're on, everything. Good way to check. Yeah. Yeah. And with D-Star, you don't have to give your call sign because it's automatically transmitted. You still have to give it. The FCC still likes to hear you say Yes. It is transmitted, though. It's transmitted every time you key the Every time you key the mic. shows down. So uh, on a lot of the D-Star nets, uh, when you check into a net, they ask you to do uh, to use quick key format. Um, you, right, you don't key up and announce who you are. You just key the mic. And there's software that runs on the gateway that somebody's monitoring, and it shows them who has who's keyed keyed up this last round. And they can go in and check everybody in. They clear off that list of check-ins. And then they ask people to put key again. Yeah, digital squared in voice, so you never have two people basically yeah. at the same time. Right, right. Now that's how you do like our Thursday night nets. What you just said, you just key in and your information. If you're on D Star, yeah. 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 Like I say, the hospital net will say, every uh, Thursday morning, 8 30, and the hospital net checks in. Uh, They'll say just quick key. So what they've got is a guy doing a piece of software on his laptop. And you just push the push and talk for just a second, and your transmitter, your call sign goes out there, your location, reflector, your own, everything goes out there. 
It, he just goes down the list. It actually, when it shows up in the, in the gateway software, if you key, it puts your call sign on the yeah, list and it underlines it. Well, I can't get into the into yeah. the gateway from here the way. I, yeah, I'll get to it. When yeah. we do the demo, you'll see it. Right. But there's software on the gateway. If you key, it puts your call sign in and it underlines it. So everybody who keys on this round of the net, noted. Yeah. their call sign's underlined. Yeah. He goes through all of those, and then he hits, I think it's Control Z, and it turns all the underlines off. And he calls for another round. People key in, it does the same thing. You know, Sunday so, night they have the weather at 9 o'clock, and that covers from North Carolina all the way up to California. <coughs> and all those states check in, call that people check in by state, and they'll do three or four, maybe four or five quick keys per state, and they'll go down and verify each one. Yeah. And the severe weather report, they report it, and they log it. So, so, some links, and I should have printed these, I'm sorry that I didn't, but take a picture of them if you got, you got your phone. Um, that first link, that's our repeater, and that's the gateway at our repeater at Fire Station 7. If you want to see what it's linked to, just browse to that website, and you'll see it's got four modules listed. We've got B and C running, um, uh, but you can see if it's linked to, to um, 30 Bravo, 30 Charlie, or nothing. You can also see uh, who's keyed up on it recently. So these three, this one is a good place to go to get a lot of good information about DSTAR. Um, this one has a list of all of the repeaters, has a list of all the reflectors, the list that Ron was talking about that, that has all the reflectors and what they're used for and who owns them, is a, you can find on, on DSTAR info. Um, you can also download, um, not RT systems files, but you can download lists of repeaters. Uh, from that site. Save my butt. Say that again. Save my butt. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. The the newer D Star radios have a feature in them that is really cool. I, I really like it. I like having this radio in my vehicle when I travel. Um, it has a different mode that's it's DR mode, whatever that means. Um, I went to here and downloaded a list of all the D the D Star repeaters in the US. Put it on an SD card and plug it into the radio. And when I'm traveling, I go into this thing and say, find the nearest D Star repeater, or find the nearest repeater. And it says, do you want analog or D Star? So I pick one or the other, pick D Star, and it tells me the closest D Star repeater and gives me a list. I can also put it in scan mode and say, scan all of the D Star and analog repeaters I've got in that table. And as I'm driving along, if I'm going on a long trip, it's following me. And I come into a new area, I've got the repeaters in that area. It does not so, have GPS coordinates. Each repeater's right. got GPS coordinates in there, and that's what it's scanning. It's keeping track of where you are. Okay. So good information about that on here. This one, these two are getting into that other group, the open source folks who are a little wild and crazy. Some of these have links that are broken, but there's a lot of good information out there, especially on this one you'll see the whole world of, of reflectors that are out there. Um, in just a minute, you're going to see um, my hotspot running PyStar. On the, that's my new favorite uh, interface for one of these things. Um, and the, the card that I've got in my Pi is, is um, from the folks who did the MMDVM. If you're buying a new card, I don't know if the Northwest Digital um, card will do MMDVM. Do you know, Chuck or Steve? Uh, no, but they have another box that will. Okay. If I was buying a new one now, I would look for MM. If I was buying a hotspot, I would look for MMDVM on it because it kind of brings it into a new world of things that you can do with them. Um, the the MMDVM uh, hotspots can do not only D Star, they can do DMR, P25, Yeza Infusion, um, Next In, what else was it? I guess that's it. There's that's five that's different that's technologies that you can do off of one of those cards. I think it stands for multi-mode digital Yeah, multi-mode digital voice. Something. Module. Module. I don't know what, yeah, I, I was going to say, I don't, the last M is something. I don't know what it is. <laughs> but I would look for that one if I was buying one. 
these days. The, this one, uh, everything that I've got there, the screen that I put on it, I've got about 200 bucks in that. Ryan yeah, has got... This, this is the Lazy Man's version for 269 It does everything that a large one does. But you it's got a very it. small display on the front, but you don't need a display anyway. Okay. Right. This runs, I can put it on this battery, which is running 4,000 million battery. It runs for 36 hours on this battery. And it's pretty simple. And it's pretty yeah, well, <laughs> and there's a HRO, HRO has a smaller version of this one. It's called ZumSpot, Z-U-M-S-P-O-T. It uses a, a, a Raspberry Pi Zero, which is a smaller version of the Pi. It got it on the website for, is it 120 It's $120. You want to buy the kit. In the kit, you get the little RF board, the antenna, and the Pi Zero. Okay, but most importantly, you get the SD card fully programmed. So all you have to do is put it together. Uh, there's another company called C, the number four labs, for 15 bucks, they make a little case that's made out of layered plastic. You put a couple layers down, put the first board in, put a couple more layers down, put your RF board on top of it, put two more layers down, screw them all together, and that's your case. Okay? The problem, the only problem with that, I love that card, the Zoom Spot card and this software is phenomenal. The problem with them right now, the only place you can get them in the U.S. is HRO, yeah. and they're sold out yeah. nationwide. I, talk, I was in there yesterday, and they said there's so many back order. When they get a shipment, they're going to be sold out again immediately. They're getting they, 50 of them in on the 22nd of this month, and 40 of them are already sold. Yeah. So they're I going fast. Them. So that box that you and uh, Ron have, that's just to get you on the internet? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's without, without a radio. Right. It's a, it's a hot spot. So, with, so if I transmit from this radio, if Ron transmits, He's going to be hitting the transceiver in this radio, yeah. okay. and and it's going to we're connected by Wi-Fi to my phone, yeah. so it gets out on the internet through that. Yeah. I, I so. can take this. I can take this right. battery on it. Put this in my pocket. Put it in the car seat. Put this on super low power, which is like 100 milliwatts. And I can talk for three days on this thing. Any place in the world. I put on a belt clip and put it on here, put my cell phone on the hotspot mode, and put this on super low power. I can talk any place I want to talk to on these cars. Yeah, I'm using I'm using this battery for mine. I, I charged the battery two or three weeks ago. And it's I, I don't run it all, all day every day, I run it for hours. So Ron, do you want to do a you want to demo it? Do you want to do a okay. one second? The truck the difference with this one and his his runs on five volts. The zoom spot that HR sells runs on five volts. This runs on 12, but it does it using a 5 volt battery. You say, how does it do that? This little plug <coughs> here has got what they call a 5 to 12 volt step up circuit in there, a little multi vibrator circuit in there. And because it jumps the voltage from 5 to 12, it kills the battery a little bit quicker. Okay? Because it has to run on one amp all the time. Okay? And that's why I ordered the zone spot so I can get one to run on 5 volts and last. Probably a couple of weeks. And it also has fun. The Zoom Spot kit's 120 bucks. This is 269 What brand is that? This is put out by Nano Spot. It's international electronics. Yeah. So look it up. You just go Google Nano Spot. Nano, N A N O. So, so Ron, let's do it. Let's see if we can make this work. Ready? Okay. Let me, um, so, what we're going to do, let's talk about it before you do it, though. Right. So right now, if you this is this is the the interface for Pi Star that's running on my Raspberry Pi. Okay, so this is coming from that box, and if you notice right now we're linked to 30 Bravo. So let's unlink first. Okay, how are we going to unlink? What are we going to send? You want me to unlink it for you? Yeah, but let's uh, go tell us what we're going to do first. The U command. The U command in the eighth position of. The your call sign. So Ron's going to just turn to the channel that he's got programmed in and key up. It should show. See, it shows that he keyed up up here with you in that field, and now it says we're not linked. So what do you want to link to, Ron? Pick one. Ah, uh, and uh, why don't let's go to uh, the 
30 Charlie. Ready? Yep, so he's got now 30 Charlie in the your call field. He keyed up, that's what he sent. And we're linked to 30 Charlie. So 30 Charlie is running on Georgia's Reflector 30. It's a it's a one of the several modules on there, and it's used pretty much worldwide. At one time, it was the busiest reflector uh, on the system. I doesn't sound like anybody. The story behind that real quick. When DSTAR first got to be more popular in Georgia, everybody got on reflector 30 Charlie because Georgia has the largest, and they still do, the largest single concentration of DSTAR radios and transmitters in the world. Okay, I, I, I in the world. Yes. Can, can you just trace the signal from point to point what you just did and how it got to there? Let me go back. Your, let me your, let me bring this up. Hold I'm, on a second. I'm transmitting the Dan's hotspot over there. Hold on a second. I'll show you. Now that's just the standard. If I can see, I need eyes in the back of my head. Let's go back to this kind of. Is that okay? So. So imagine this is this thing that's sitting on the table right there. It's, it's got the, the module, it's got the controller, it's got the gateway, all in that Raspberry Pi. This is Ron's radio. He put a U in the, in the uh, your call field and keyed up. It went through here and it told the gateway on my Pi, unlinked from whatever you're linked to. And it just responded back to Ron and on the web page and said we're unlinked. The, he, you unlinked when he said it, right? When he gave you the command. He right? sent the you command that calls the Pi to unlink, right? It's, he, he sent the command from here. It went back to the gateway. The gateway said, okay, they want me to unlink. So it shut down the link to the reflector that it was on and sent a message back here to say I'm unlinked. So now at the moment, so, it's just a regular D-star repeater. It's not on the gateway anymore. Okay. So, I'm going to link it to one charter because that's the international reflector. It's usually busy pretty much most of the time. So, and what that's going to do, it's going to again send the command up to the gateway and tell it that we are going to link to one Charlie. That tells this that we want to participate. It tells us we want to be on that reflector and sends everything back. So then anybody, any other repeater system that is linked to one Charlie, we're going to hear them. And there's stone silence. Yeah. There's nobody there. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say this. Yeah. 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 So what are you unlinking? Just the gateway? Or the, the network from the gateway? The, get, the network stays up. It's just unlinking the gateway. I mean, it's just unlinking. It's telling the gateway to unlink from the reflector. From the, okay. So it's always connected to the network. Right. What is the network? Um, still, somebody else whatever. couldn't communicate. One of the others could the communicate is, with you. The internet? Oh, yeah, that is. That is yeah, it's just going out over the internet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's always connected to the internet. So did you get. I didn't have it turned up. See if there's anybody else. See if there's anybody outside of the U.S. It's the yes, right, right. It's the GPS coordinates that are in his location. Well, no, 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 no. It's the GPS coordinates that are in his radio. It's from his, from my radio to his radio. Dan, there was a question just a minute ago. When you come in there with the U command, or when, let's say, Ron comes in with the U command. Hold on a second, Charles. Who is this? Where is it? Eight, eight, three. Down in the uh, southeast uh, corner of uh, Australia. Hi, Siegel. Isn't that very, very hot? WB 
He's on my frequency. He's on the free. This has a this has a trans transceiver in it. Correct. So he's talking to this on four forty six five hundred. Okay. Um. In. Let me see if I can get back to. But if he just sent a U command without any other call sign, You're everybody right. that was on that network would unlink, wouldn't it? Yep. Um, let me see, let me find a slide. That's too far back. Okay, this is what I was looking for. Um, so first of all, he's on my frequency, right? So he, I, if, if this could be on the frequency of the, the UHF repeater up at Station 7. So. Hey, let's, let's have one conversation. Okay, so the question was how how do, did the system know that that unlink command was meant for my oh, hotspot yeah. or my repeater? Yeah. So, good question. First of all, what I was saying is that it's on my frequency. I've got that thing listening on 446-500, so it's going to hear me. But also, you see over in repeater 1, the, ref the repeater and module that I'm talking to. So the call sign of that device is W4DTO, and it's the B module. Okay, so he sent the he sent it to W4DTO with B. the B module. Right. Okay. Right. That answers now, the question. if I had a second module running in there, and I could do that, if I had a C module, I could distinguish between the two. I could tell it to unlink the C module. So does that make sense? Yeah. Does uh, that help? Vaguely. I don't, I'm not, the, the C module's a little okay. iffy, but. Okay. Are you saying that, what you just described, that's like having two channels going at the same time. This one is designated as this one. That way you can have this one down and you can transmit with this one. Right. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Right. right. And that's the, if, you, if, I, if we sent the U with nothing in repeater one, or if we sent it, to this one with WX4 PCA, it's not going to do anything. It's got to have the device that it's talking to and the module that you want yeah. to address in repeater one. Okay, does that help? Yeah. Um, so what else, Rick? Very good. Is that is DSAR considered a log conversation? This is a logable conversation. Sure, absolutely. I've got and cards. I've got cards from people. No, no, not just, not just like in your AWRL logo. Yeah, absolutely. Well, would this count against like your uh, DXR or something? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. This is a, I don't think so. 
Not for contesting. Not for contesting. Or Right. Right. There is one right. contest here for D-Star team. What's that? There is one D-Star contest. Oh, okay. They have one a year. No, but they have a lot of... But it's kind of... Yeah. It's kind of fun. I mean, we just talked to Australia. I did something when I when I had my first D Star radio. My wife gave me one for Christmas one year, and on uh, New Year's Eve, I managed to get it online and got it on one Charlie. And my daughters, the only time they've ever transmitted on amateur radio, every hour would come downstairs and say Happy New Year to whatever country. And that day, they were so excited. Uh, they talked to Australia, they talked to New Zealand, they talked England, Ireland, Japan, Korea. They talked to people all over the world. Um, I love HF. It's a, that's, contesting is a lot of fun. I like to see how far away I can get with that piece of wire hanging in the tree. But this is fun too, yeah. being able to jump on here and go to Australia from, from a handheld. <laughs> so, talking about that, what was that? The accents just cool. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Sometimes you can't understand them. <laughs> they talk about it. When I plugged my first Tom DVD in, uh -huh. the first contact I made, and I got a card from the guy, was in the Netherlands. Hmm, yep. That's it, it's all over the world. It's it's really it's really neat. So. So, but the way to get there, if you just, if you jump on our um, 440 D-Star machine, it's linked to 30 Bravo. There's not a lot going on on 30 Bravo. So how are you going to hear something? You unlink it and go to 30 Charlie or go to 1 Charlie or get on those links that I showed you a few minutes ago and explore. Find a, uh, a reflector that you'd like to link to and, and link it up and see, see what you can get to see you can get to. James? And in Echolink, they have the listing of all the repeaters in the different areas of the United States and probably the world for that matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There must be an equivalent yep. in the D star to this. So you can do the same thing on the internet and find that. Is that correct? It's going to give it to you right now. This is one of the links that I gave you. And well, you can go. The users should get you there, shouldn't they? Um, you, this is a list of all of the, this is the REF reflectors. That's that first group of reflectors that are kind of, it's part of the U.S. trust system. I'll call that D plus, right? I'll show, uh, yeah, it's, it's the D plus re reflectors. And 30 Charlie is in here somewhere. Um, you can go down here. Go down a little more. Would that be in the threes? Yeah. yeah. Um, there's 30 Charlie, and that's a list of, of Modules that are a list of people who are or modules that are connected to it. Scroll down um, and see who's on there. Remote users. There we go. Ron should be in here. And if you keep going further down, you see who keyed up last. A lot of people listening. <laughs> in the radio, it's got the repeaters. In Just do this. There you go. Oh. <laughs> Just do a search. Last search. There we go. WB3 ILX. So, and let me go. Let's do. Um, I need eyes in the back of my head. Is that or I need to turn this around? Um, this is one of the links I gave you, but I just want to. I think. And that's not. This is where I'm trying to get it. X reflector. X reflector, yeah. Yeah. This is some of the newer open source reflectors that you can get to. And if you, this is one of the links I gave you. Um, if you go to this IRC DDB live, this is people who are transmitting right now on different reflectors, and it tells you where does it tell you the reflector that they're on? Um, right. Right there. Right there. And you'll you'll normally see the REF reflect X REF reflectors, um, a lot of stuff out there. It normally moves faster than that. And can you control the Raspberry Pi with the computer also? 
you have to do with the I can can you change the reflector on You can. Okay. You can. That's something that we're, we we're talking about these are, are kind of personal hot spots. I've got one of these ordered uh, that we're gonna try a little experiment with. We're gonna try to connect it to a master three repeater. And maybe bring up a, a D star repeater using an analog uh, repeater and using um, wherever it is that software with this software um, well you have to have admin rights to it to to change it but I could I can change a link from there the thing, uh, the thing about the master three repeaters is they are very versatile GE Ericsson came out with modules to make them digital friendly <clears throat> they will do P25 if you have the right module, the GETC, or you can uh, do any number of other yeah, digital that's modes. Yeah, that's and, that's what the and that's that's what we're using right now for the 955 and the two meter packet that's at fire station seven. So there, you may hear more about that. Um, we'll, we're going to bring that up and see if we can make it work. So, where else do you want to get? That's what I had on it. Any other questions? Give me a frequency size. Brian. Is that, is that um, uh, repeater and all that related to your echo link? No. 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 It's totally no. different. This is just this is just D Star. Well, it's D Star, P25, DMR, Gazoo Fusion, all of that. How you got the frequency at 446? Um, it's just a simplex frequency that I plugged in in the configuration on this right. thing. You listen to make sure nobody's using your own. There's where I set the frequency that I want it to listen on. This is I, 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 my first hotspot. I downloaded Linux and put it on a box. I downloaded software and installed it. I edited files and plugged stuff in and played and, and got frustrated and quit and came back to it. It took forever to get the first one that I set up working. This one, I downloaded that image from the guy's website. I put it on a micro SD card, plugged it into a Pi, and about 20 minutes later, I was linked to a reflector. So, anything else? Ask questions if you if you got them. one thing that we didn't even touch on here is D rats. I saw you asking questions, I think, about DRATs the other day. You can, we use DRATs a lot over the internet. You can link DRATs to these <coughs> things too and send data over, uh, over RF for DRATs. So, yes, sir. I see a lot of hardware here. I, I guess a neophyte question is if I just said, okay, I want to get into DSTAR, what do I have to buy? Yeah. The very minimal you got to buy is handy talking. That's a very minimal. Okay, now we're talking about a D-Star handy talk. Yeah, right, that's right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right. And also does that all. Okay. Well, okay. So wait, 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 wait. I have a... You can do what Chuck did. Yeah, yeah, that's my guess. Yeah, but you can do your computer for a change. What, what? You've got to stay with the brain of your computer all the time that way. What do you mean stay with the brain? If you're in front of the computer, how long is your headset? If you... How long are you on? Because you're on. Oh, on. Oh, yeah. The oh, yeah, you can do that now too. Yeah, if right. you've got if you've got a D Star handheld and you're close enough to a no, D Star but, but repeater, I mean, if you, if you're on D Star. What's the difference between that dongle and your and your um, your uh, there? The so there. Well, no, I mean this one, the way I've got this working and and runs Nanospot and Chucks as well. This thing's got a transceiver in it. So if I'm not close enough to the repeater, and I have one of these, my handheld is going to talk to this, oh, and so that's going to put me on the D-Star network. It's still got to be a D-Star handheld. It has got to be a D-Star handheld. Then there's a third option, and I don't know, I haven't done that, um, haven't been watching those lately. I think Northwest Digital has got a card. There is also a, a device called a DV dongle. That's the first version of it that you plug into your computer. And that becomes kind of like Echolink. 
you don't need D-Star radio, you got a USB device plugged into your computer and you're using the microphone and the speaker on your computer. So you can just that. Yeah, that's a DVD. Chuck's? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can I cross band to my ID5100 in my truck from this and having this on a digital uh, cross band repeat for that? Yes. You can, you know, I'm, I haven't done cross band repeat on D Star from here, but I think but we you can. can do it with a digital frequency as well. Yeah. Yeah. You can do cross band D Star. On, you can cross band D Star. Yeah, the, way, the way cross band D Star works, you have to have a D Star radio. You put your, if I do it from my house, I've got a 20 inch mm -hmm. Okay, as a base mobile radio. Mm -hmm. There's, you can figure that, but it says automatic receive, and what it does, it pushes back and forth between analog and the ambi chip, which decodes the D Star data. Okay. You set the handy talk key up on a simplex D star frequency so that it transmits all the information that D star is looking for. Mm -hmm. Okay, then the 2820 that it's transmitting to transmits that information out to the receiver. Oh, okay. And when it comes back, the receiver, the 2820 is receiving it from the repeater with all the coded data there. Okay, and it sends it over to this thing, and then this thing finishes the decoding the rest of the way. But all done with digital voice, though. Okay. But this, believe it or not, this, this is set up in a very unique way. And there's a special way to do it. And the procedure before I have written down, I've written down. The frequency because I've got all this stuff on it's much easier to use and much more reliable. And I've gone directly from this to this to the internet on my phone. Can you do HF digital from that? No, you can't do it. Um, yes, you can. I heard that you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. The I the ICOM is it an ID oh, seven thousand? Yeah, yeah. So ID seven thousand one hundred. Seven thousand one hundred. Yeah, seven thousand one hundred. That will do D star on the HF band. Okay. But now there is there is a device. I told you that I've ordered a, a device that we're going to interface to a master three. Take that and interface it to an HF three. And you've got D Star on on HF, and there is a there is a group that does um, D Star on yeah, there's a program called Free DV. You can download Free DV. You need two sound cards to make it work. Yeah, usually people use a sound card on the laptop, and they'll get a USB signal link, and they'll configure that Free DV okay, program. Cool. You use one sound card to receive one, 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 one sound card to transfer on. You better pull. You might go to one of them. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. I, I did a couple of years ago. It's fantastic. You, you just don't find that much activity out there. Okay. How come we got module C? It's the default. I didn't turn oh, okay. it off when I set it up. Because you said C was down, so I wanted to. Yeah. Okay. That was my goof. I linked it accidentally. Well, so, well but so <coughs> the, C, the C repeater is down. The VHF repeater is down. The gateway is still there. So you can link to it. You have, if we have people linking to it, they could talk. B is unlinked right now. If you link it, it's you're on D star. So, any other questions? Ask questions about it. If you got questions, I've got some cards here uh, with my email address. If anybody wants one, I got just a few. Um, be glad to help. Thank you, Cameron. Lots of the other hats.